the can director for the CA with the question prior in the UK, it was my job to try and think of a link between research and CX, and Jed, you've just done that beautifully for me, 46%. Switching banks because of a poor experience, I'm sure it's very similar in other industries um, as well, and goes to show that you know there really is a big need for organisations to focus on the customer experience. To that end, I'm delighted to be joined by Jerry Angrave, um, someone who I've known for a while now. He's a global CX consultant, um, a customer journey mapping expert, the author of the journey mapping playbook, which is in your tote bags uh, if you want to learn more about journey mapping and take that forward. So, Jerry, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Now. And just picking up on that sort of need and importance of focusing on the customer experience you know what are your views on that i think i'm, I'm biased so i would say yes it is important but there again there's a lot of a lot of research that that points to organizations that that genuinely uh better focus on customers and uh, have the, the the commercial terms over and above publicly uh within an organization that just gonna pays lip service to it. So I think it's really interesting um, statistic around people who have switched, so the actual behaviours as well as the, the intention. And I think that the challenge then is to understand the why. You know, why do people move? What, what, are they, what are you moving away from? And what do you want it to be like? Um, so yeah, that, that, that research comes along and it should be a real catalyst for, for us to sit up and take notice about what it is we're doing, what we should do, do differently. Totally, and you know, I reflect when listening to Jack speak on that, there's, there's so much good stuff in these market research studies that customer experience teams should be aware of. And you know, I've worked in customer experience for, for 20 years, I was at Sky for 12 years, I don't think I even knew who the market research team were. I, often it is so siloed I think that's why we're really excited at Question Pro. We've got a new customer journey mapping tool, and I think it's a real opportunity to bring research, customer experience together and break down some of those silos. Would you agree, Jerry, that journey mapping is like, useful for that? It's phenomenally useful for, for a number of, uh, number of reasons, but I think to, to your point around marketing, market research, customer experience teams often they often do work in the insiders, probably unintentionally. Um, but I do see sometimes it gets confused some that worked with an airport recently who they had a they're trying to collect uh, customer experience uh, information. Uh, but the, the survey that they had it was at one of those kind of kiosks, uh, it was just um, just going hair hair side. And it was between the coffee shop and, and the gate. To, to start the survey, um, it took 15 questions to get to the point of how did you find your experience? All the, the other 15 were uh, how far have you travelled? How much money do you have? What ethnicity are you? Final call for <laughs> Mr. Angre. Yeah, it's, and, and the books are all the night. I'm not going to do that because I'll get a coffee on these gates. Right? I, I, you know, I, I happily help you if you just. Um, asked me a really straightforward question. But what had happened there was the uh, the market research team, the marketing team had, had their own agendas. There's a, uh, there's a survey opportunity, and I think we have to be careful as CX people that that um, this can be split, but it can also get in the way uh, of, of the the real hacking swine. So yeah, I kind of see that. But to your point around journey mapping, yeah, for me, the journey mapping is a way of organising their thinking. So if we look at the fantastic research that we've seen this evening, the danger is we get overwhelmed. So like, where on earth do we start? And, and so having, looking at it from a customer's perspective uh, and then overlaying how that operational data we've got, overlaying the, the vision and the what we want the experiences to be, really then starts to hone down and right, we're going to do this, this, and this. But yeah, um, yeah so it, it's a way of organizing the thinking. Yeah, and making sure that I guess you can focus on action. I often say to people as well that you know if you're considering a voice of the customer program, why don't you do some journey mapping first, and why don't you really think about where you're going to try and solicit feedback, where you want to listen to your customers, 
so you aren't catching them on the way to the gate on the aeroplane. So we kind of, you know, clearly from the slide, going to be talking about customer journey mapping. We think it's a great tool and very useful to break down silos to organise your information. Hey, Jerry, how do you go about this? Like, it feels like it could be a massive undertaking for for an organisation. It, it can be, it can be, but it can also be really, really straightforward. Um, can I just take a quick moment? Uh, who here has kind of led a, a sort of journey mapping program in their, their organisations? So, cool, okay. So um, it's, uh, it, it can feel like a massive program, but it can also be done really easy. And in terms of where would you start, um, taking some of those research, those insights, and, and say, well, who who was feeling that they should be moving ahead? Why did they want to? And then uh, people a journey to design. I think that that's one key is that we have to be patient. We have to be we build build out the program, pick up the priorities, um, but do one at a time. And it can be and this is a, a template that I could go through in a second. Anyway, it can it can involve the whole organisation, but it can also if you want to just be. Would you on your own with a couple of team members have a coffee to say, let's really force ourselves to step back from our business and look at it from a customer perspective and then get real customers to validate that after. So it can start off small and then it just kind of builds out um, as the capability of the organisation grows uh, yeah. and this appetite for doing it because we kind of have to be careful what we wish for a little bit uh, because you can end up with a huge amount of information so when you're setting out on journey mapping have one eye on what are you going to do with it who's going to do it and, and, and as they be prepared to you'll you'll head you'll end up with action plans all over the place the soul's got to coordinate it prioritize it get by in and all that don't so just open pandora's box and go on mapping journeys forever have a plan and have actions you want to take out of yeah it. yeah absolutely i think the other thing is when you're going into the journey mapping is it's not just about the uh, the insights that it generates and the, the actions and the ideas. One of the biggest um, uh, pieces of value that Jetpacken brings is that bringing people together from different parts of the organisation. They learn about their own business. They learn about what each other does and they start to make connections. And some of the most valuable conversations happen in those workshops. And so, for no other reason than that, it is worth worth doing the journey because to break down those those silos, or at least take a customer perspective of what we do. So, yeah. awesome. So, do you want to just sort of run us through a few things from this slide that a typical journey map might look like, and what's important? Why are you sort of saying those things? Yeah, sure. I'll sort of stand for for a second. So, yeah. So, this is a really straightforward template um, for you and your teams. If you've not done journey mapping before, then uh, something like this would hopefully get them uh, uh, up and running. It's supposed to be really straightforward. So at the top we've got, yeah, as the persona. So the key thing is who is doing what? And here, what's your persona and what journey are they on? The tighter that can be, the, the better. Because um, if we start mapping the end twin journey for everybody, it's, it's going to get very convoluted. So be quite specific and say that's why we need to be patient that we're going to build a, a calendar of these. Then there is the, the stages, if you like, so the chapters of that journey, what happens before, during, and after. And you want to kind of like three or five stages, put them in the customer's language. That starts to change the culture of the organization. If you start talking about customers, at the, the, uh, journeys where they're high, I slept, so I'm choosing, I'm buying, I'm using, I'm renewing, I've got a problem, I need help. It really starts to take on the customer's perspective. And then there is, um, so this is where you'll see all these pictures of, you know, some post it notes, and again, it's a great kind of um, uh, bonding exercise for, for people to do. The sort of things that we're looking to identify is what are the team's views on what is what success of like? So, what, what would it take for a customer? At that stage of the journey, to go, hey, you know what, that was brilliant, absolutely brilliant, move on, complete applicant, you got me, because it solved their problem, it addressed their, their immediate need. And then we kind of look at, well, what, what's, what's going on inside their head? What are they thinking? <coughs> so now we're starting to get behind the what. So we, the, the research market, we were talking about what people might do, 
this is starting to look at kind of why, why they're doing it. So what questions to that, what unanswered questions to that, what frustrations and niggles, what are that pain points? What's going on inside their head? And then we've already talked about it today, how they feel. And this is where we get into um, kind of supply awkward conversations with uh, with commercial directors, operations directors, and you know, say, let me talk about emotions and their eyes roll and say, no, it's about money, Jerry, no, it's sure. you can Jerry just will say, give them one a hug. It's, it's going to, if you think, if, if you're struggling to get by, I I, I, we're really having um, imposter syndrome here because we have Colin Shaw in the room. He, he knows more about this subject than anybody in the world, so I'm really trying to cheat with this character. <laughs> <laughs> But if you, if you have sceptical stakeholders, if you can't get people to your gym mapping workshops, if you can't get them to spend time with you talking about customer experience, why it's important, ask them about the experiences that they really enjoy or they hate and why. And they'll talk about restaurants they've been to or having their car service that was like brilliant or it's awful. And slowly, when you talk about it in those terms, the penny drops because their emotions will drive their future behaviours, and that's what we're trying to get at it. So what emotions are driving value within the organisation, and which are destroying? Because the, the bits of work that stick around this would be, how good do you want to be as an organisation? How do you want your customers to feel? Okay, and then that gives you a good kind of line of sight of where you're aiming for. Because if you're evoking any of the emotions that destroy value, then that's where you focus. So you have some really good conversation around that sense. And then fundamentally, what are they doing? As a result of their questions, what they need to do, how they're feeling, what do they physically do? And this may or may not be with you as an organisation. Could be in, their, in their, their world. But yes, this is their journey. So then we take the opportunity to put our own house back on. And this is where everyone breathes a sigh of relief from not bottling and what. Um, but internally, what is it like for the employees, for the colleagues, for your teams, for the third party suppliers, the people who are supporting you. What are the challenges and, and problems that might come across? Capture all the ideas as you go through it. You will generate some fantastic ideas. People will go, oh, what if we do this? What if we do that? Get those down. And then lastly is kind of what do we measure? Because what will become apparent often is that you'll have operational KPIs, maybe for how many people go to the website, how many people you lose, how many people sign up for the app, how many people use the self serve portal. But do you have a customer measurement at each stage so that you know how big it is from their perspective? So that's kind of it's a, a framework, and to be honest, if you, you can read it and the workshop just on that framework, but as I said before, it, it, if you invite people from across the organisation, people who may not be customer facing, they may be right in the back office or in the central group function. Get them involved if you can. So the airport, I was mentioning you have people from the, from the fire service, from air traffic control, as well as airline space managers and stuff. So it, it's just a really good way of bringing people together and going back full circle, what you get out of this is a set of actions and priorities that then are driven by the, the market research, the market research pointed you in the right direction, you've now drilled down in that in a bit more detail, you're going to see why people behave the way they do, and you've got a set of actions that will then you know, take, you, take you forward. Yeah, I was, love that. Thanks, Jerry. I think, yeah, a simple framework to follow. I always use thinking, feeling, doing when I'm doing journey maps. I love to show the organization's perspective on it. So that different teams have different views, breaking silos is so important. Interesting though, talking about the market research, because we've got a, a new tool in our CX journey mapping tool where you can use AI to import call interviews straight into a customer journey. And from what I'm hearing from you, that would be a great starting point, right? We could just get a bunch of interviews, get them in the shape of a journey with the stages done, and then easy, easily facilitate these conversations. So I'm excited by that. Um, we're thinking then, about we've done the journey work, right? I've done it, I've rolled up the six meters long piece of paper, I've put all the post-it notes in a pile, hoping I can read them again later, and I've chucked it on top of the cupboard and no one's asked me to ever look at it in the organization again. What are your tips for how we keep this going and how we get the best momentum out of that work and thinking that we've done? It, it, it is a challenge. Um, 
I think quick wins is, is uh, goes a long way. So um, some of what you and Cameron, what you want to do will be uh, kind of uh, minutely cultural in the sense of think actually we need to have a wholesale review of how people are rewarded and, and motivated. So we might be more strategic, but some also might be just very tactical. Get on to it, get some quick wins under the belt to get that momentum going. Invite those, so and then you'll start to become uh, everyone's best friend in a way because people will hear about what you've done and see the value. They'll want to come to your next workshop and, and the momentum goes on. So I think be, yeah, just get some quick wins under the belt, but make sure people can relate what you've done to the commercial outcomes. And so it is aligned to the business. So I can, um, I'd always say journey mapping should be strategic, effective, and influential. So strategic in the sense of the journey that you're looking at is also a priority for the business as well as customers. Mm -hmm. If sometimes we, we map journeys of things that we think, actually that's half hour, but that'll be good to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, effective in, it asks the right questions, some of which we'll come through. And then influential is about making sure that people do some change off the back of it. And it is compelling and it's got credibility. So I think uh, the way you do that will be to get some group wins under the belt, get your next journey mapping in the direct, it's, but it's part of that bigger customer experience program, isn't it? About, you know, and, and it can then inform the next bit of market research that you do. If we've uncovered this, we've validated it with customers, but when we did, they said actually there's some nuances that we didn't quite understand, so put that back into the broader market research. And then, no, it was <coughs> it's awesome, so kind of get it going viral within your organisation, so people want to, get involved and, and come and play with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm also thinking, I've got this kind of lot of talking to, to Viv about on YouTube and all this stuff. Um, this forming vision in my head about actually your journey map can become your CX dashboard, right? So for a certain part of your dashboard, you pipe the right data in, you link out to bits of research, you do all of that. Suddenly you've got this living, breathing storyboard that isn't just post-it notes on the wall. It's something that you can share. You can tell those stories that inspire action really easily from it. And it updates daily, weekly, monthly. So it helps you find improvement opportunities right off the bat, having done it once. You, do you, am I barking up the right tree there? Is my vision yeah, a little I, bit? I, I think that would be really interesting to have because we, we, we do create dashboards, but they inherently tend to be updated monthly, but then the risk is that everybody waits to see what the next number is. Yeah. Have we gone up or down? And the people that could obsess or are already upset if we've gone down by point two and or celebrated we've gone up by point three. It's like it's if, if it was done more on a daily basis, it would just become part of how the business works. It would just um, you know, people would be able to see it, you can publish it, share it. Um, so yeah, I think a living breathing dashboard would highlight overall how the performance is going. Uh, but we also highlight maybe some, some pinch points where things are, there was something for a problem over here, or uh, one of our branches is, um, what, what's happened here? Because there's somebody turned red from, from green or wherever it may be. So yeah, I think that kind of living on dashboard, again, you've got to have the governance around it to make sure that what are you gonna do with it? Because you might need to up on the door to the leadership team and say, look, you know, this back where it's shown us, but again, that's all part of them. The bigger picture, but yeah, so it's have a, a dashboard on screen, a lock screen this size up here, and nothing very covering it. And um, yeah, I think that's it for me that ability to not just be interesting. I spoke about this in a webinar the other week. You know, interesting is the enemy of CX, right? We're doing this stuff to take action. If you go to the leadership team, as Jerry said, and you go, Hey, look at this jet, and they go, hmm, That's interesting. That's it, you're done, you don't get another chance. But if you go, this is happening, we're doing this, it's gonna impact this, you're onto something good. I think journey mapping is a huge part in helping you get your CX efforts set up to do that better. Jerry, thank you so much. We need to- one more point. Oh, no, I was just gonna say on oh, that point, um, yes, it, it's all to do that we're driving a game change and a lot of people focus on creating a visual version of the journey map, which is fine if that's how you want to share it. If that works for you and your organization, great. 
Um, but <coughs> some organisations will go straight from actually the schools that will post it notes. We, and at the end of the session, we prioritise. So we're not what we're going to do. So was, some company, an airline I worked with recently, just didn't bother with drawing it up. They just went straight from a prioritisation. This short term, medium term, long term stuff. We just just got on with it because it's your point. The leadership just wanted to see action. They don't have pictures, so, <laughs> so it can't be that quick as well. You know. Yeah, yeah, in very very time. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jerry. So, thank, thank you. you. Interesting insight into the world of journey mapping. Thank you. Thank you.